Welcome to This Week Health Conference. My name is Bill Russell. I'm a former CIO for a 16 hospital system and creator of This Week Health, a set of channels and events dedicated to leveraging the power of community to propel healthcare forward. Today, we have an interview in action from the fall conferences on the West Coast. Here we go. We are at the Chime Fall Forum. I'm Reed Steffen, VP and CIO of St. Louis Health System. And I'm joined today by Yohani Salad, who is the CMIO of Digital Health and VP of Innovation at UC Davis Health. Yohani, good to see you again, my friend. Great to see you, too. So you and I are both bullish on generative AI. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's broke the scale rather than 11. But with pragmatic kind of perspective. So we've talked about this before, but maybe just share like how you're approaching that at UC Davis Health. Be excited about it, but also to be pragmatic and appreciate that it's not a silver bullet and there's understandable considerations you have to make going into it. So how do you, what's the framework or mental model that you approach it with? So Reed, great question. Can it be the silver bullet? Yes. Maybe. Right, I, I think we need to know it's okay. in the same way as when we're looking at nuclear fusion, right? You cannot just start automatically with nuclear reactors in it, right? You need to ensure you understand what you're dealing with and that you actually have a proper safety workflow to know when to use it, when not to use it, right? And we certainly now it's evident for us how on the right, we were, were initially with radiation, right? But it took some time. We're, we're going in a lot of large language models with a mindset that it can solve a lot of our problem. It is definitely can. The question is how you properly titrate it into the clinical and operations to both learn from the process as well as start to benefit. Because the, the last thing you truly want to do is create this unrealistic expectation that yeah. tomorrow you'll click the easy magic button, yeah. right? And so the chat bot will come and solve all of your solutions and you'll be able to automate the full workflows, right? It's a very nice mind frame to potentially think about where future may go for human automation, right, in the support. But before we get there, we need to ensure we establish proper processes on everything. Yeah. Because after all, a lot of the models are sequence to sequence that's predict based on the data they consume. Mm -hmm. So we need to ensure that the data is not only fair, but we actually frankly know what data is being fed with. Yes, you may not really know a lot of this, right? I like uh, that. So we need to, as a healthcare system, be equally excited and realistic. Okay. So I like that. So before we kind of build the manned mission to Mars, let's maybe get good at some like low Earth, like satellites that we launch in a low Earth orbit. So are you prioritizing clinical or business opportunities or both? If you think about that analogy, like what are the low Earth, Earth orbit kind of wins that you've found so far? So direct clinical care, yeah, use cases, possibly are not a good start. Yeah. Right? You're, you're not going to brain surgery yes. immediately. So you always try to start with the areas where A, you have good predictability, right? And you have enough monitoring of the input, output, as well as the process. So where we're looking at right now is that all the processes that we may have in some administrative workflows or the workflows that can offload monotonous, right, and easy, easy to predict things. And we try to slowly build our expertise on yeah. things that it's easy for us to audit. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of the models that we see right now are relatively black box. Right? You think you know what's your inputs and you think you know what you get there. But then the model version may have changed or anything else, and out of a sudden you're getting a different result. Yeah. Okay. So internally creating not only the processes where we can capture and audit the inputs and outputs in the process in the system, but actually learn how to operate with potentially smarter co-pilot. Yes. That still require a lot of the alignment. Yeah. So we actually build the workforce that you know how to operate with this newer hybrid. So as you were talking about that, it made me think of IBM Watson and healthcare. And like, what if they hadn't started with trying to cure cancer? Like, what if they'd started with something different? Like, maybe the outcome would have been a different result as well. And I think we can learn from that. So I think that there's likely, 
there's probably no regrets, low risk opportunities in this space and not go right to your point, brain surgery or some really advanced clinical care need that we can operate in. Have you found any of those at UC Davis Health? Maybe in non-clinical workflows, legal department, you said co-pilot, some of these augmentation tools that are embedded in tools we already own. So a, a lot of the information that's being elected presented yeah. to humans who currently manually have to review things, right? So your audits, your discoveries, your additional information retrieval, summarization, potential are the great use cases as we look at, right? Your knowledge management, some of the QLA systems that's currently, this knowledge lies somewhere on your SharePoints. Yeah. I'm completely locked, right? Yes. Like, except maybe your admins, no one knows that. People who wrote it, people who audited it, right? Possibly the only one that knows the content. Your regular users cannot get it. Unlocking that very often is low risk, and that's what we see from uh, OpenAI Enterprise Dev, yeah. right? The creation of those targeted bots is now being simplified to the point where you just have to start dropping files, yeah. right? you still will require a lot of alignment, right? And that's where the workforce knowledge that it's not panacea is important because the answer is likely correct. It's not guaranteed to be correct. Yeah. Okay? And it's a very different way to interact with, with data and the knowledge. But then incrementally, you start building on, on this information. So can I start getting my preliminary report the same way I'm getting in radiology? right for a lot of the things in the data yes right like your radiology reports are not 100 percent clear right yeah. so time you may say preliminary yeah. reading was incorrect your goal is to be as precise but still you can operate in this like, i think a lot of the generative ai tools may be something similar right into this radiology early fast reports right where you can get the glimpse of the information you're trying to look through your data that's being stored in endless Excel routine. It's right and start probing and asking some of the questions where precision it may be not as critical. As long as you're directionally correct, you actually start getting some of the value. We want to thank you for a wonderful year. As you know, we have celebrated our five year anniversary at This Week Health, and we are going to enter our sixth year of doing this. And we set out a goal to raise $50,000 for childhood cancer this year, and you did not disappoint. We have raised close to $60,000 this year for childhood cancer, and we really appreciate you. We appreciate the community coming together, and we hope to do more of this next year. We hope that you'll join us. Yeah, I think the point you're making is so important, and I worry sometimes that People think, well, that's so pedestrian, like what you're describing. That's so kind of, you know, table stakes kind of an approach. But we need to get the reps in because we don't fully know how to use this yet. And so I think that is the, that's the training ground to get the reps in, to get good at this. Then some of the more advanced, more exciting clinical applications will be better prepared for them instead of starting right there. So I would argue, please, right, that this Watson moment harmed more than help. Okay. Why? Because everyone was excited, right? Yes. It's almost a decade ago. Yeah. Right? And then big failure, spectacular yes. failure. And out of a sudden, people afraid. Yes. People afraid to talk about it. People afraid to dream. People afraid to yeah. kind of talk about all of it, right? That's what slowed you down. Yeah. Right? What's important is the velocity. Yeah. Right? And you're not getting from zero to 100 in milliseconds, right? We're still talking about the seconds. You need to properly kind of get into the right velocity. And a lot of that has depended on the mechanism that you have to build, right? Our innovation engine in artificial intelligence still has missing parts, right? We're still talking about regulation. We just had executives, yes. right? Is not have you had you read the whole thing? Have you of considered course, that? Okay, very good. I'm still reading it, but, <laughs> but it's required, yeah. right? And we will have to build a lot of those components while building. Yeah. So I would say it's not pedestrian, right? Yes. You create the proper way to go fast, but learning that techniques because you don't want to stumble and fall. Yeah, that's a great analogy. Okay, we're at Chime. What's a problem that you've brought to Chime in your mind that you're trying to look for? Nuggets? Or what nuggets have you found one day in that are going to help you back at UC Davis Health? 
So arguably the chime just started, right? right? So I'm still looking for a lot of the wisdom. We only had an informatics for yeah. so far. But I think the way we think about the clinical practice, right? And the way we bring the bedside experience back and the way the organization started to talk about how we can not only automate everything, but reasonably start automate things, right? To actually protect our work from scrum unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Questioning is like, yes, we can generate a lot of notes, right? To satisfy requirement for billing, should we? Right? If the information is not easy retrievable yeah. based on augmented documentation, do you even need to? Right? Because people are talking about we can now draft denial letter faster, right? In response to that. Guess what? Insurance can do the same yes. things, right? And it's this become race. net zero, yes. right, of increased computational costs uh -huh. where we're just competing on a natural language correspondence, <laughs> right? That's not what no we're striving for, yeah. right? Like we were striving for clarity. And yeah. a lot of the time when insurers rightfully ask for information, there, there are gaps. Is language a best medium to do this? Because generative AI is not only language mind, right? This can do code, this can do interfaces, it can do multi-models, right? So maybe instead of overly focusing on generating yet more bloated node with generative AI, we need to actually use the potential of generative AI to create better, faster interfaces, not now even more interoperable, even more connected. Yep. So we actually have less snail mail. We have less faxes, right? Fax is still everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's still digital facts. Mm -hmm. Does it make it less facts? No. <laughs> it's still a facts. Yeah. Right? So a, a lot of this, in my mind, need to be questioned because now we, we do have a technology that it's generation defined. Yeah. A lot of the things in five, 10 years will be different. And like with many other things, we, I think we're overestimating where we're going to be in five years, very underestimating where we're going to be in time. Okay. All right, you heard it here, community. Question everything. That's what I took away from that. So, Yohani, thank you for your time, and have a great conference. Thank you, Reed. All right. Another great interview. I want to thank everybody who spent time with us at the conference. I love hearing from people on the front lines. It is phenomenal that you shared your wisdom and experience with the community, and we greatly appreciate it. We also want to thank our channel sponsors who are investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. They are CDW, Rubric, Sectra, and Trellix. Thanks for listening. That's all for now.